Hi, I'm Scott Nelson from Harper uh, College Welding Manufacturing Maintenance Program. I am a welding manufacturing uh, program specialist. Today we're going to be giving you a virtual tour of our welding manufacturing maintenance lab. We have Carlos Guillen right behind me here. He's going to be giving us some welding demos. Carlos is a full-time welding instructor here at the college. He's going to be demonstrating gas tungsten arc welding and gas metal arc welding. All right, Carlos, take it away. Hi, I'm Carlos Guillen and uh, I'm a welding instructor in Harper College. Uh, today, I'm going to show you two demos about the welding process. And on the right side, we have TIC weld, is a gas tungsten arc welding. And on the left side, we have a MIG of gas metal arc welding. Both practice is going to be in a mild steel. This is the two most common welding in the marketing right now. Tick well is a really clean well, and uh, we do tick just for uh, some specific job in uh, stainless steel, aluminum, and titanium. The titanium we can use this technique for aircraft parts or aerospace. The stainless steel we can use for food process company um, have to be a sanitary well. For aluminum, we can do for bakery and we can do for a lot of cooking uh, company. Now, we're gonna do a demo in MIG weld, gas metal arc welding and mild steel. This technique is very popular in manufacturing just for a regular production. Okay guys, uh, this way we finish uh, the demonstration of the welding process. Keep in mind, corporate college gonna train you for a different type of job and different type of welding. Now we're gonna pass to, to do some cutting and a laser. This is another part of the manufacturing and welding uh, training in Harper College. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, uh, those welding demonstrations by Carlos. Uh, up next, we're going to be doing some cutting, and we're going to be, there's many ways to cut metal, material, and steel. We're going to be cutting some mild steel with a laser. So we're going to have Instructor Carlos, he's going to come in here, he's going to help us out, and we're going to do some cuts on the laser. All right. Hi guys. Let's go and do some cutting and a laser. You know the laser is one of the uh, most popular machine in, uh, in the shops right now. They increase the production. They can increase a lot the percent of the production. But right now, let's go and do some cut, okay? After we cut the piece, we change the table, we switch the table, and we can take the pieces uh, from the table. And remove the piece. When we put all the pieces in the pallet, we come back and do the process again to continue the cut and the production. And this table, we have a three different thickness of metal. We have a 1A, 316, and a quarter inch. In a regular production, you use a different type of metal and a different thickness. Depending on the job, you can cut all the pieces in one. With this code, we can increase the size, we can decrease the size, we can do everything in a, in a cutting process. Thank you, Carlos, for that great demo. Uh, we're going to head over into our CNC machining area. 
Aaron Kolb is one of our uh, full-time instructors there. He's gonna be giving us some demonstrations. So if you guys wanna follow me this way, we're gonna head over there right now. All right, so now we have a special treat. We have uh, some uh, CNC work that's gonna be going on here. Aaron Kolb is a uh, full-time manufacturing instructor here at Harper College, and he's gonna be running some demonstrations for us today. Uh, Aaron? Hi, I'm Aaron Kolb. I'm one of the full-time uh, machining instructors here. Today we're going to do a demonstration uh, with the CNC mill. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. So a long time ago we used to run things on manual machines and we used to move the tool by operating cranks and wheels. Now we operate the machines by punching code into the machine and we let the machine do it for us. It's gotten to the point now where whatever you th can think up in your head and we can draw and we can draw up a print we can write a program for that print and everything comes in here in numbers. It's like coding and these numbers dictate where the tool path is going to go and it's going to create the shape um, on this blueprint. We're going to take a real quick look at a solid modeling program called SolidWorks and this is where we can actually uh, model a part and we can get it on screen and then we can pick up the entities from the model and then we can create a CNC program that goes in the machine that we ran before. But in this program, not only can I flip this around, I can look at the backside, I can zoom in on, on certain holes. This program, is, it, it's very powerful. I can also go in and I can get, I can assign different materials to it. But the real uh, value here is to write a program that we don't have to code by hand. CAM stands for Computer Automated Manufacturing. And what we do is we can pick tools for every part of the operation. And when I hover over these tools, you can see on the screen the tool paths of each area of, of the part. I can generate a tool path, and there it goes, and it's going to calculate all the numbers and lines of code that goes into the machine. So I can check the accuracy of this program on the screen before we ever bring this to the mill and risk damaging tools. And so with this kind of program, we can produce parts that are very complex, things that would be very difficult to code by hand. Those are all the lines of code in the program, and each line of that code tells the tool to go on a certain path from point A to point B, and it cuts the profile of the part. So we're gonna do a simple part here. This has actually got five axes. Typical mills have three. This actually has two rotary axes, so we can do really complicated parts. We're gonna demonstrate a little bit of that here, and I'll kind of walk you through the program as we go along. So the first tool that's gonna to come up is a drill, and it's gonna drill a hole in the center of the, of the part. The next tool is gonna to be an end mill, and an end mill cuts the shape of the part. It cuts the steel or the aluminum or whatever material we're using. The blue fluid that you see is called coolant. It's a water-based fluid, and it's got three purposes. One, it, it takes the heat away from the tool, it washes chips away, and it adds lubricity to, between the tool and the material. So it makes the tool last a lot longer and stay sharper. Right now we're using air instead of coolant just to uh, evacuate the chips away from the tool. This particular cutting tool is made out of carbide, so it's very heat resistant, so we don't need the coolant all the time. So it's currently cutting the profile, the outside profile of the tool, or of the part. And now we're switching back to using the coolant for doing the inside profile because it's hard to evacuate the chips. So the coolant flushes those out a lot better than the air can. But we're using the coolant mainly to evacuate the chips, not for the heat uh, reduction. Now it's going around the outside profile again, but at a deeper depth. This is the finished depth, so this will finish the part on the outside.
So the machinist or the person that runs these machines works hand in hand with the engineer who designs the parts. And sometimes the machinist actually helps design the parts. Now we've got another drill and you can see that the part is rotated. And now we're gonna drill holes along the outside of the part. With the five axis, we can do things much quicker than we could manually, as doing this manually would require many different setups, and now we can do everything in one setup. We're able to produce the part a lot more quickly, but more accurately. Now the end mill is going to come down and take a finish cut around the inside and the outside to get rid of any sharp edges left by the drill. Now I'm going to blow this the part off the cool, off the coolant, and we have our finished part. And this is what it looks like, one that I ran before. And to give you an idea, if we were to run this on a manual machine where we had to do all the setups manually, this would probably take several hours to do. On this machine, it took about four minutes. So you can see the, the increase in productivity. All right, thank you, Aaron. Uh, and now we're gonna head into a little tour over into our welding area, and we'll go from there. All right. Welcome back. We're going to take a quick lap around through the uh, welding area. We're also going to pass through the manual machining area. If you guys want to follow me, we're going to head back over here. Uh, we have a wide variety of uh, welding processes. We have, as Carlos demonstrated, gas metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding. We also have shield and metal arc welding, which is stick welding. And we have a wide assortment of plasma cutting, oxy fuel torch cutting that the students can learn. Here we have gas metal arc welding and TIG welding. In the first few classes, students are learning how to weld. Then in some of the more advanced fabrication classes, they're learning to put everything together to be able to operate uh, cutting machines, rolling machines, everything from being able to read blueprints, working in small groups and teams. So seeing that come together is real exciting because by the time students move on to some of the more advanced classes of welding, hopefully they've got that consistency and confidence in all their welds. Most of the welding students, in fact, probably even more than half the students haven't welded before. So this is a great experience and opportunity for them. A welding in a lot of these uh, manufacturing processes is kind of like riding a bike. Uh, once you get to a certain level, you kind of never really lose that. Uh, no pun intended, you might get a little rusty a few years later, but uh, once you know how to weld, once you know and understand how to see the arc and the puddle, it's like they always say the light bulb comes on in your head, uh, you know, the aha moment, and you're like, I got it. And then you just go from there and keep building. So it's exciting to see students continue to improve and learning a new skill and a trade that they can take with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, not only having a job, but building a career and going from there. So let's head over here. We're gonna swing into by the basic welding lab area uh, where a lot of students would start out for the first time. If you've never welded before, this is where you would start. And like I mentioned before, you would start out usually with a wire feed welding process, gas metal arc welding and shield and metal arc welding, the stick welding process. In a lot of these programs, we, we like to start out students being able to learn how to crawl, walk, step-by-step, step, and be able to run. 